uh, welcome back students uh, to my second part of my lecture so if we go through the aspect of child labor in india we will see that uh, till the year 2015 india was the home to largest number of children who were working illegally in various industrial cities and towns so in india agriculture is the largest sector where many children at early ages uh, work to help or support their families. Okay. So, a common phenomenon across our country is that our country has a very uh, higher population density. I mean, not only in terms of higher population, you know, around one third, India is the home uh, at around 130 crores of people. So, not only in terms of the larger population growth or uh, expectancy but uh, we do have a higher population density right? and you see the the fertility rate the birth rate in india is also higher than most of the european countries or american countries so uh, but in india in our country poverty malnutrition illiteracy these are also uh, various forms of social evils so india has to fight not only against child labor but simultaneously we are engaged in eliminating the other social malpractices social evils associated with child labor right so all these things i mean corruption illiteracy child labor malnutrition poverty population growth all this come concomitantly so the problem is very much complicated in our country so you see uh, before the coming of the British I mean before the battle of Plessy so uh, the British what what happened in uh, 20, 23rd June uh, 1757 Sirazdala was defeated and after the victory and the Britishers uh, became victorious in the battle of Plessy and with the death of Sirajuddullah, the British conquered. I mean, they they were financially, economically the lord of the region of Urisha, Bengal, and Bihar. So this region, this eastern part of India, was a prosperous uh, region with a flourishing agriculture, industry, and trade. Now this incident led too many children being forced into labor due to the increasing need of cheap labor for producing large numbers of goods. So this was the first instance where children in large numbers were employed as laborers by the British economy. Right? I mean they were the financial lords uh, of this country. Now, uh, a recent study has revealed that in, in, in India, uh, as well in the, we, we do have various NGOs, I mean non-governmental organization, they have done an extensive research on the numerical figures of child labor in India. So you see, due to many children who were, who were being illegally employed, the Indian government began to take extensive action to reduce the number of children working and primarily to concentrate on the importance of facilitating the proper growth and development of children. So this phenomenon is, is of course post-independence era. Now before independence uh, we, we had the Geneva Declaration of the Rights of Children Act which was passed in the year 1924. This act was followed by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 which aimed at incorpor incorporating the basic human rights and the needs of children for proper progression and growth in their younger years. Right. So this act prohibited uh, hiring of children younger than the age of 14 years and from in working in very hazardous, unhealthy condition that would lead to deaths. Right? Now, 
after independence due to the increase of regulation and of course legal restriction in our country regarding child labor there has been a 64 percent decline in child labor from between the years 1990 to 2005 although this is a great decrease for our country but the numbers of children working as child laborers are much higher right with 85 percent of the child labor occurring in rural areas and 15 percent working in urban areas there are still many substantial areas of concern in the country of india now you see, uh, India has a legislation passed by the parliament in the year 19, sorry, 1986, which allows work by children in non-hazardous industry. In the year 2013, the Punjab and Haryana High Court gave a landmark order that directed there shall be a total ban on the employment of children up to the age of 14 years. So under no condition, under no circumstances, any child who is below the age of 14 will be allowed to work in factory or industries. So now I shall go to various acts which were subsequently passed by the independent Indian government after independence. The first of them was the Factories Act of 1948. This act prohibited the employment of children below the age of 14 years in any factory and this law also placed rules on uh, when and how long can pre-adults, I mean uh, uh, children, I mean all the teenagers between the year 15 to 18 can be employed in any factory. So this act was passed in the year 1948. Now coming to the Mines Act of 1952, this act prohibited the employment of children below 18 years of age in any mine. So under no circumstances, uh, children below the age of 18 years can work in mine. Now, in 18, 1986, we had the Child and Adolescent Labor Act. It is also known as the Child and Adolescent Labor Prohibition and Regulation Act, passed in the year 1986. So, according to this act, a child is defined as any person below the age of 14. That uh, I had already talked about in this lecture. So, this act also restricted that children between the age 14 to 18 are defined as adolescent right and the law allows adolescent to be employed except in the listed hazardous occupation and process which include mining inflammable substance and explosive related work and under any hazardous process as per the factories act referred to in the year 1948 so children between age 14 to 18 can work in factories or industries which are not hazardous right they can work in textile industry they can work in the farming agriculture uh, areas but not in uh, hazardous industry so in the year 2015 we had the juvenile justice care and protection act of children a law which made a crime punishable with prison term for anyone who will employ a child for the below 14 years right and in the year 2009 we had the right to children to free and compulsory education act which mandates free and compulsory education to all children aged between 6 years to 14 years this legislation also mandated that 25 percent of seats in every private school must be allocated for children from disadvantaged groups and physically challenged children. So, it is very evident from this act passed by the government that uh, uh, we are trying, we are desperately trying to decrease, to put down the growth of child labor. In other words, we are trying to eliminate this social malpractice of child labor. Now, you see the children who work in factories, they fail to get necessary education. They do not get the opportunity to develop physically, mentally, intellectually, emotionally or psychologically. In terms of physical condition, these children are not ready for long monotonous exercise as compared to the adults because they easily get exhausted. Right. So this reduces their physical conditions and makes those children more vulnerable 
to disease. Uh, so health, the aspect of health is also a significant. Now children working in hazardous conditions are even in worse condition. Right? Children who work uh, instead of going to school will re re remain illiterate for long and will fail to contribute to their own well-being as well as to their community, uh, I mean in the group in which they live. So child labor has long term as adverse effect for India. So we should be aware of this aspect and not only uh, students of English literature, not only as college going students, but you being a budding researcher, being the future citizen of this country, should note, should take care of the social evil called child labor. If any situation arrives in your life, you may have to protest against this social malpractice. This is your, this should be your fundamental duty and responsibility. Now, I would like to end my lecture with a story uh, written by the Danish author Hans Christian Andersen. The story is named Little Match Girl. It was published in the year 1889 and in that story we see a girl, a little girl, uh, I mean a child. Uh, she is roaming on a freezing wind New Year's Eve. Uh, she's severing and barefoot and she's trying to sell matches, this like that, right, in the street. She's afraid to go home because her stepfather will beat her, failing to sell any matches, right? So, not only in their working areas, in the workhouse, in factories or industries, those children were subjected to exploitation and, and, and brutal experiences but also in their home, in the domestic sphere, they were treated very cruelly. Such was their miserable condition. Now, now it is. So, uh, this girl, she huddles in the angle between two houses and light matches to warm herself. So, in the flame of the matches, she, she sees, she, uh, she views a series of comforting incidents. So what were those incidents? A warm stove, a holiday feast, a happy family and a Christmas tree. Remember the vision the angel provided in Blake's point, the chimney sweeper, quite relatable in this aspect. So in the sky, see, uh, she observes a shooting star, which her late grandmother had told her that uh, means someone is on their way to heaven. In the flame of the next match, she, she comes across her grandmother, the only person to have treated her with love and kindness. So to keep the vision of her grandmother alive as long as possible, the girl lights up one matchstick after another. So in this process, she burns the entire bundle of matches. And what happens? So when the matches are gone, the girl dies. And in the next morning, the passers-by, I mean the, uh, the co-passengers, the, the people, found the girl dead, frozen, and they express pity. They do not know about the wonderful dreams that or visions that the girl, little girl has seen and how happy, she is now very happy with her grandmother in heaven. So this is a beautiful short story by Hans Christian Andersen, which on one level explores the pity and miserable condition of child labor but also provides a beautiful utopian vision to the readers. So this for all now.